Hey guys, and welcome back to the Armory for another episode of this Great Helm making series. We're making the Dagen Helm from Germany, a 13th century Great Helm, the earliest extant piece that we have. And in this episode, we're going to be making the crown or the top plate for this helmet that locks everything together and makes the top of the helmet nice and strong. In the last episode, you saw us bring together those four main plates of the helmet and uh, she's starting to look like a helmet. How good is that? In this episode, we're moving on to some of those more complex elements of the helmet. How do we get this rolled edge here? So let's move on with the first stage of that process, which is patterning. Just before we get into the patterning process, we're gonna double check that the top of our helmet is exactly level. We place the helmet onto the folder, lining up our center lines with the crease, and then the marker is used to trace the inside and the outside of the top of the helmet. Excellent. She fits beautifully. Now we get to cut it out and trace it onto the steel. The top plate of the helmet pattern is traced onto 2.5 mil steel and cut out with an angle grinder and jigsaw. It is then deburred and profiled on the belt grinder. An outline of the formed helmet top is traced onto the new piece of steel in the next step. All right, helmet top is cut out. Now we're gonna work this entire plate to give it some strength, work hardening and rigidity before we go to turn the edge. This is important because since this is mild steel, it's just gonna warp and deform and bend twist and do all kinds of nastiness that we don't want if we don't first put some shape and rigidity into it. A cold chisel is used to mark around the outside of the line, defining the overlap material. This way isolates this outer section of the steel and ensures that that is what moves and that this center part of the helmet doesn't move or warp or twist. The flat top helm design was first seen around 1180 CE and lasted to the end of the 13th century. As technology and experience increased with time, it transitioned into a more domed shape to accommodate the bassinets worn beneath it and giving the top more inherent strength and integrity. The flat top helm is certainly an odd design, breaking tradition with its curved nasal style predecessors. But this raises the question as to why did the great helm begin with flat tops in the first place? Perhaps the main reason for this flat top design is the added complexity of bringing together multiple plates of steel. On top of that, knights were primarily fighting from horseback, so the majority of the threats came at the rider from below. That's my take on it, but I'd love to hear more from you guys in the comments below as to how you think the flat top came about. Alright, crank that tank on, crank that tank on, open. Using heat for this process is absolutely pivotal to getting a consistent finish, as is using consistent hammer technique. If you don't have either of those two things, the work will kink and warp and bend in ways that 
you don't want and you won't be happy with the final finish of your product. So, use heat, use consistent technique, don't try and do it cold, and you'll end up with the kind of helmet top that the helmet deserves. Speaking of heat, the fuel that we're using is petroleum, no it is not petroleum, <laughs> propane with an oxidizer, pure oxygen, uh, in this, okay, what am I, <laughs> not again, oxy propane torch, and what's important to keep in mind when you're using something like this with high pressurized explosive gases like this, is fire extinguishers, flashback arresters, ducting in, ducting out. Always got to keep safety in mind. And with that said, let's get back to what we're doing. So we're just about done the first pass, or the initial pass of bringing the edge down to just get the sides in for the top of the helmet. But there's this cool little detail here, as you can see at the front, the steel kind of comes down, this little like beak thing, peck peck. And that's because as we bring the steel together into a point, it's squishing material and that material has to go somewhere, right? So it's moving out towards the edge of the plate and that's how we get that little peakiness there on the corner of our roll. But what's cool about this little detail here is that just like we have a little bit of a peak thing happening, oh what do you know? Look at the original. There's a little peak thing here on the original as well. So isn't that neat how the original has the same little detail that we have in our peaks that we're making here today. 500 years later and still, well, 600, 800 years later, we still have the same little detail that they had on the original. Pretty cool, right? I think so anyways. So, we have this top plate now pretty well roughed in. It's matching up pretty well. Now, we have to crisp up the top lines, just make sure everything's cleaned up and tidied up before we drill any holes and get it matched onto the top of the helmet. And we have that lining up. So what I'm going to do is grab some heat and use the heat to just seat this onto the body of the helmet and then I'll be able to pin it at the back. Once that's all in place, then I can do a final pass to match up the edges and get the rest of the rivet holes drilled in. So, everything's now been cleaned up, that top edge is nice and crisp and even, we've tidied up the shape, got it nice and even for the next stage, which is marking holes and drilling those holes and getting it all attached to the top of the helmet. One problem though with that is that this edge here is not completely the same height. So, we're gonna need to come back and trim that down to the lowest height that we have here, which is about 19 mil. We're gonna mark that all the way around the edge and cut it off using the angle grinder and the belt grinder. Alrighty, so the top of the helmet is now where it needs to be. We're gonna use heat now to seam up all the edges, 
of the crown plate of the helmet and make sure that there are no gaps between it and the helmet before we drill the holes that will hold the rivets that go around the outside of the helmet. The crown plate of the helmet seals the build into one single piece. Reinforced by the overlap of steel on steel, the top of the helmet is locked together into a strong and rigid shell, resilient against the mightiest of blows. The foundation of the helmet is now in place and we are one step closer to the finished piece. That wraps up the third part of the construction of a Great Helm series. We're really flying along with this project and the next episode you'll get to see the ocularium region get put into this helmet, which is what really gives it that distinctive look that this type of helmet has and really brings it to life and gives it that personality that we've been talking about from the very start.